Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the Market Site in Times Square, we have Eddie Hertzman. He is the founder and president of Sourcing Journal. And we're going to dive into some of the details with the phase one trade deal. It's been great to have you uh, with us, Eddie. And last time we spoke, we were kind of talking about tariffs and the potential impact on retailers and manufacturing. We got the confirmation of the phase one trade deal over the weekend. There's not much detail in it, though. There's not much detail at all. All we do know is that the 15% that was going to be added December 15th has not been added, and there's been a rollback on the, on the tranche three, the September tariffs, from 15% back to 7.5%. A lot of the goods, though, that were tariffed previously, you know, handbags, home, et cetera, are still impacted at that 25%. So this is what they're calling a skinny deal right now. Uh, on a micro level, people are feeling a little bit better about it, but on a macro level, there's still a lot of uncertainty. As you said, we really don't know the fine print of this deal, and we really don't know what's to come of it. So there's still some challenges that have to remain for 2020 in terms of outlook. It's, it's the level of uncertainty is still there. Even if this was to go into, 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 into place, companies are having a really hard time planning 2020 and beyond. With the election coming, the, the, the likelihood of any deal happening before an election is slim to none. So companies are really having a hard time figuring, figuring out capital expenditures and also where should they move production to? Trump has threatened Mexico. He's removed some GSP preferences with India. He's, he's, made, uh, he's, he's tweeted that there's unfair trade with Vietnam. So if you're a company trying to figure out where do you go, do you stay in, do you stay in China? Maybe. Do you move to other countries? Nothing is really safe right now. Right. So when we talk about this phase one deal, it does sound like it's a little bit light on the details. Phase two and phase three, it sounds like that's where the more complex issues would need to be hammered out. Yeah, and, and when is that going to happen? So if that happens post-2020 or after, you know, after the election, that, that's, it's creating so much uncertainty, companies really just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the concern that we're all having. We saw in September a lot of people brought in goods prior to the increase in tariffs because they were trying to avoid the, the, you know, the impact on holiday. Now they're sitting with inflated inventory levels. They're cutting back on Q1 orders. So again, do people remain in China? Do they order early? You just, it's creating a lot of chaos in the supply right. chain. But you can't just switch your manufacturing from China to another country overnight. I mean, that, that requires a lot of money. It requires a lot of space and sourcing. It's not something where, you know, next week we're going to manufacture in Vietnam and say goodbye to China. It just doesn't work like that. Well, there's a few things. Vietnam has less than 100 million people living there, so the capacity is, is, is very small compared to what chi uh, China has to offer. If you look at like footwear, I think it's something almost 70% of footwear is manufactured in China. So to move, it's, it's very, very capital intensive. The, se the second thing is you're not like, again, the consumer hasn't felt it really yet because the brands and the retailers are absorbing it. Mm -hmm. What they're not seeing is, is, the, is the macro impact of all of this. To your point, there's so much counter sourcing going on. People are moving sourcing and things are late. They're having to air it. What's the cost of all of that? Uh, there, there's a huge impact, and I think that it's, it's, we're going to feel it, you know, maybe Q1, Q2 later into yeah. the year. And, and to your point, holiday 2019 spending is supposed to be a record six weeks of Black Friday to, to Christmas spending. And I think over a trillion dollars is expected for 2019. That's a big number, but that doesn't, what, what does that mean? for Q1 and Q2 if these issues remain? I think it's, it's all optics. So I think that you know all of the reports that have come up have, have said an increase in brick and mortar, there's a massive increase online, really good. But the question that I want to know is, what does that mean for margin? If people brought in so much inventory early, and to, you, to your point, Black Friday started, <laughs> it never ended really, it right. just goes on forever. I mean, it starts in July now. Right, so now, what do they have to do to move those goods? So is it, oh, online increased by 14%, brick and mortar increased by 4 or 5%, but what is that going to mean to the margin at the end of the day? If they have to discount heavily 40, 50, 60% off to move the goods, is it really a great holiday season? Uh, I guess we'll find out in first quarter earnings, that's for sure. All right, Eddie, thanks so much for joining us as always. Thanks, and Jill. thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.